The future is ours to make or break as far as tubus and euphonium is concerned. Of course, the current economic situation is not real happy time. Well, we've as been Jim can tell you, the yeah. studio work, the military bands are cutting back because they're having to spend all their money out shooting people. So the military bands are in bad shape. There are positions that are not being filled there. Uh, university budgets are being slashed. I know my university budget's down 30, 40% over what it was just a couple of years ago. Uh, but you can dwell on that, the negative, or you can say, okay, what do we need to do to have a positive future here and find new and creative things that we can do as, as uh, tubists and euphoniumists? And uh, it's going to have to take some real creative thinking. Well, it's a different generation now. I mean, look at look at all the, the, the nice toys that's out there. For example, with the computer now, I can teach somebody in Europe. They can have a lesson. I can do it on my Mac computer. I've done a couple of those. I mean, that's the way it's going to go. CD? Why do a CD when you can do a video with it now? I mean, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be, you know, you don't have to go and travel. You can do these things. I look for that in the next four or five years. Now, if we want our instrument, we've got to be part of that movement. Yeah, but I don't know how, you know, that's... Uh when, when you're teaching lessons over a video internet thing, then, and you're teaching somebody in Australia, now there's a tuba teacher in Australia that's not working. What's well, not this? Is, well, that's, <laughs> this is the equivalent. You know, of, understand what I'm saying? Well, why doesn't he get the You know, it's like, it, it's it's like the guy in the, the train that used to shovel the coal hey. in there. You know, after a while, we don't need that guy because we got a new computer. Wait, Winston, this but is, that guy will figure out oh, yeah, what I'm, to I'm, do I'm, to I'm yeah. saying that's, you know. This is what's happening in the studio. That's right. You, you the, use the sampling the, stuff the, and the, you. The composer in Hollywood sits in a, in a, in a, in a, with a computer and he directs a session in Prague. That's great. He, he literally, this is so he was in the booth in mm -hmm. Prague. Yeah. And it's live time, okay? And it, and on top of that, it's all this technology is putting people, that's why we have unemployment. And you don't have any choice but to go with that, right? You don't have any choice have, but no, to go with that. We have no it. choice. We, that's right. But that's right. we have to grow up. Yeah. And now the, the, the organization, ITEA, has grown up. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's in the second or third generation yeah. now with with these other people running things mm -hmm. and and so on. And it's uh, it's it's as mature and as serious as the violins and the and the pianos and every other instrument. We have great artists. We have the literature. We have. We just have to keep maturing. This is my feeling. Well, you have to you have to think five years ahead. I mean, if you if you're going to get stuck in what's happening here. What, Think five years down the road. What kind of jobs do you want to create? Now, you know, you can sit and wait for the orchestras, and I really have great admiration for the orchestras and the like, and you get one of those jobs, it's terrific. How many, you might as well run for the United States Senate. That's Rich, Rich Madison used to say. There's more jobs in Senate. But if you want one of those jobs, what do you do? You study for it. You train like you're going into the Olympics, you know? I mean, you, you just, you practice those excerpts, you listen to recordings, and you've got to play them the first time great. You know, now, how many guys do that? It's really interesting we're having this conversation here. And I remember 40 years ago having a conversation with Harvey about this very same thing about, you know, where are the gigs and what are we going to do? And boy, all these incredible new young tuba students coming along. I'm talking 40 years ago, yeah. okay? And I remember Harvey's statement at that time, and it's, it's guided my, my motivation ever since then. I remember Roger got involved in this too. And Roger was saying, well, you know, we've got all these great play, young players coming up. What the heck are we going to do with them? And I had this, and I had this, Roger pose that question at some point, probably at your meeting. Yeah, I remember that. And I remember having a conversation with Harvey, which changed my thinking about all this. And Harvey's comment was, there's always room at the top. And if, and if you're good enough, and you work hard enough, and you're talented enough, and you pay your dues, and if you're good enough, there's always room at the top. And and, and we can tell you, because we've, we've seen this happen, yeah. You know, you think you got the, your top tier players and you think, okay, well, that's it. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a Michael Lynn pops up. That's correct. And he said, wait a minute, where did this guy come from? And then all of a sudden, a Roland Svintpoli pops up. And all of a sudden, a Sergio Carolino pops up. I mean, you know, these guys pop up out of, you know, so yeah. there is room at the top. The, the interesting, and so yeah. the, the motivation for, for young for young players is to have that realization that there is room. And you work and pay your dues and you become good enough. You will, you will find an opportunity. You will create an opportunity for yourself. But there's more than just playing, too. I mean, you know, there's, you're going to have to network today. It's, you know, you don't learn that so much in colleges, although it's becoming part of the program anymore, particularly here. You know, you survival, can learn how to survival, you know, and, and uh, you know, first of all, 
I remember Chuck Mangione was a real good friend of mine, and when he hit his uh, big record, he didn't make any money at all to the second contract, you know what I mean? He says, damn, I wish I'd have gone to business school, you know? Me too, I'm the worst. You know? And, and, and uh, now people can major in business and tuba. I mean, that's the great thing about it. One of the reasons I took the job here, I, I was concerned, is this, you know, other than I got lucky to get it, but what the, the thing was, is they had a program here when I didn't have to worry about these tuba players getting work. You know, they didn't make it on the tuba, they can go out and, hey, major in something else, you're a good businessman, use those talents, hustle out there. And, and, and that's what's happening with the well, quintet movement and everything. All, all musicians. All musicians. All musicians that. are disciplined people. And they they can survive in tough situations, and they can make an income. They can do other things and be perfectly happy. And maybe they didn't get in the LA, LA Philharmonic their dream, but but mm. they are probably very successful. After forty some years of teaching now, I've had umpteen students. How many have made it professionally? Very few. And uh, but I have never had a person come back to me and say they're sorry they they spent four years getting a a, a music degree because it. It enriched their lives and it made them uh, 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 productive people. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you know, only three percent. There's a, there's a, there's a chart out there of people who go into music are going to make it in music. All right, and of course they're going to branch out and do something else. The best doctors that I found out, all that musicians, because the discipline it takes to play an instrument. Well, you know, it's like, who said this? I don't know, but I'll quote it again. You, you hit 350 and playing baseball, you're fantastic. You play 350 and as a musician, you're a total you failure. You did. <laughs> you know. And look at all of us here in our late 39s, okay, <laughs> still playing. You're in sports and all that, you're dead at 35 or your knees are shot, you can't do it anymore. What other profession is there that you can keep going like this? It's, it's amazing. I feel, and I'm sure these guys do, I've been very blessed, it's been lucky, yeah, you know. Yeah. Made some mistakes along the way, but you know, the main thing that I remember with all of us, you're talking about the Bobos, the Harvey Phillips, the Michael Lins and all that, everybody was really, really wanted to do the best they possibly could. And that's what I think we're doing today with our students. We're doing the best that they possibly could, you know?